Okay, so do you start now? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Good evening, ma'am. Very good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Very good evening. Okay, near about 31 participants have joined. Should we start now or we'll wait for uh, others to join? Am I visible? No, ma'am. Am I visible now? Yes, ma'am. Now we are visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, our today's discussion is uh, topic of discussion is do you know what we will discuss today? So we will discuss today, that is your unit 5, teaching listening across the curriculum. So what do you mean by the term listening? Yes? Listening is attention. OK, you say one by one. So that it would be audible to others. May I again question, please? What do you mean by the term listening? Ma'am, listening means hearing something attentively and mindfully. Attentively and mindfully. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Yes, Atasibala, very good. Anyone who want to answer? Yes. Okay. So listening is a skill. What Atasi said to listen attentively and mindfully. So listening is a skill among the four major linguistic skills. What are the four major linguistic skills? Listening, 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 skip speaking, they are reading, writing. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Is it arranged sequentially? 
Yes, ma'am. Is the yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. So all these four skills are arranged sequentially. So you have to maintain that order or sequence in order to make our teaching learning process effective or make our language learning a effective one. But basically, what do you do in our classroom? First of all, we motivate the learners or we impose the learners to write first. Yes or no? Which is the most complex skill? Which comes after all the three linguistic skills? Writing. Writing, ma'am. Writing. Yes. Writing is the most complex skill. But our teachers tend to uh, impose that skill at first while teaching language or while teaching the linguistic skill. Yes or no? First of all, we are taught how to write. So far, our listening and speaking skills are completely neglected in a language classroom. Yes or no? So listening yes, is a very, yeah. very important skill. If you are not listening to whatever is taught, then we cannot comprehend the idea or comprehend the uh, text. So in order to be an effective teacher, in order to be an effective communicator, we should have to be an active listener. If you are not listening properly and attentively, then we cannot comprehend or we cannot express our ideas completely or in a effective manner. So listening is the most important skill. So today we'll discuss about the four major skill. First of all, we'll discuss about the listening skill. Why listening is important? Anybody who can say why listening is important? Because listening puts input for uh, any other activities first. Yes, listening puts importance or helps to acquire other linguistic skill. So far, our mother tongue is concerned, the child acquires or inherits his mother tongue naturally. Yes or no? Because his environment is uh, allows himself or herself to listen that particular language. So far, our so far our second language is concerned. Uh, we can say that in our language classroom, near about 50% or uh, more than 50% students are unable to speak in a foreign language or second language. So what is the cause? What is the cause uh, behind this underachievement in a second language? Because yes. uh, our speaking, speaking skill is more neglected in school and colleges. Our speaking skill in second language, language particularly. OK? Speaking skill in second and language. Daily life not used. Daily life not used in second language. In our daily life, we are not using that particular language. That means not enough scope and exposure is given or you are not getting enough scope and exposure to learn the particular foreign language or second language. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So th this is the cause that our classroom, uh, if you go to the cl uh, eight class or uh, class eight or grade nine students, you, you will find out that most of the students are not able to read properly. Speaking is far away. They are not able to read. So this is the cause because our uh, in, uh, second language is only taught in the English class. And th there is no other exposure. Whereas a child is very fluently communicate with his peers, with his surroundings, with his neighbors, very fluently. Because he has enough exposure in his mother tongue from his birth. From infancy, he has enough exposure to his mother tongue. So scope and exposure is one criteria. So I am sharing the screen. Uh, we'll discuss it.
Visual visible? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So why is listening important? Because listening still emphasizes that require more systematic instruction and evaluation. Like, sorry, the teachers of English do not uh, give much emphasis on the listening aspect and only they emphasize the use of language skills that require more systematic instruction and evaluation like grammar, reading and writing. They give much more emphasis on the grammar, reading and writing aspect. Whereas they are not giving too much emphasis on the listening aspect, which is the most important skill. So listening is the process of receiving, interpreting, and making sense of auditory information. Effective listening is a fundamental skill with applications in all subject areas and real life scenarios. Listening is also a fundamental skill. Um, a student's failure in a particular linguistic skill uh, depends on the in appropriateness or inactivity in a subject area or in a, he is not act, he, is a, he is not a active listener so that's why he is an underachiever and he is unable to comprehend the ideas that is expressed in a text or expressed by the author so listening exposes a person to the contextual vocabulary of the speakers helps the listener to acquire new vocabulary new sound patterns and enables the person to derive meaning using other indicators like stress, tone, expression, and body language of the speaker. There is, however, no planned or focused listening to content or text in other subject areas apart from teacher talk. Unfortunately, listening has not been adequately exploited and honed in the language class, much less in the classes of other subjects. In the language class also, listening is not uh, listening has not been adequately emphasized or exploited. It's because the, uh, what is the cause? Why listening has not been adequately exploited in a language class? Yes? Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then what is the cause? Yes. Ma'am, maybe uh, one cause is maybe teachers play an important role in the school. That's why a student get a less exposure to express their self. Maybe a one cause. Can you repeat again? Because teach Ma'am, basically, uh, whatever may be, uh, teachers I think approaches still now more in our school and colleges. So that's why teacher most of the time play a maximum fun, uh, vital roles. That's why. The speech of the student may not be got a lot of exposure to speak something that may be a cause. Okay, students are not provided that much exposure or that much scope to speak something. It is they um, yes, basically yes. they depend on the teacher, teacher stock. Okay. So teacher also does not provide any situation for the student or allow them to talk. So uh, this is the reason that another, the students, uh, yes, ma'am. Another reason, paper again. 
peers uh, student uh, do not uh, tell and other uh, person are do not uh, uh, english language uh, so he do not uh, yes you are not audible okay one cause is that there is a fear there is a fear of wrong pronunciation or there is a fear of humility jodi mu kichhi bhul kahi deli mo patre kichhi bhul bahari gela then i am a subject of joke in the class this is one cause the student feels that i may be um, a joke for my peers if i say something I'm wrong sometimes but this will not be the I'm case sometimes. yes sometimes students sometimes. are stressed to uh, sometimes students are stressed to speak the sentence uh, fully and appropriate sentence so that's why student get to fear because if you want to speak then feel in yes, the yes. Speak, uh, full sentence very good teachers also expect that the students would uh, say or pronounce the foreign language in a particular order or systematically they follow the syntactic pattern with appropriate pause stress intonation and structure but this should not be the case uh, in a ling language class the main aim of the teacher should be how to convey ideas or how to extract or elicit response from the students or the teacher's aim should be how far the students have achieved the particular instructional objective or not the teacher should not assess the students at first the teacher should allow or give or create scope for the student to express themselves freely a fearless atmosphere should be created for the student so that they will spontaneously involve in the teaching learning process and they will actively take part in the conversation or communication activity is it okay so this barrier or obstruction in a language class should be moved away okay Uh, next is uh, importance of listening in learning and language acquisition if you are an active listener then you can comprehend the ideas but, um, in a better way and your speaking ability will also enhance so in order to be an effective speaker you must have to be an active listener or in order to be an effective communicator you must have to listen attentively and carefully Uh, whatever is being said by the teacher or by the communicator next is connection to cognitive development language used as a prerequisite for cognitive development in for our cognitive development also we need to have we, we should give more emphasis on the listening skill listening enriches language and exposes learners to vocabulary and contextual cues so the stock of vocabulary of the learner also improves while he becomes an active listener uh, language teachers focused on emphasizing skill that require more systematic instruction and evaluation like grammar reading and writing they use listening only to practice those items uh, you must have uh, learned about the concept dictation yes or no yes ma'am yes ma'am tumko dictation rakha jaye what is the purpose what is the purpose behind this dictation listening yes Develop develop listening listening and 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 writing. writing writing the the words. words. Yes. Develop the skill of 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 skill spelling Okay, good. and increase our vocabulary okay. skill 
increase our vocabulary skills. Okay. There are so many background sounds. Can you please uh, switch off your microphone? So, the purpose or the aim of the language teachers is only how to practice the grammar, reading, and writing aspect, and emphasizing the emphasis on each on the systematic instruction and use of grammar. So that should not be the case. Language teachers should focus on the listening and speaking ability of the learner. So automatically, the reading and writing aspect will be improved. Subject teachers, however, did not focus on the content specific vocabulary much in a conscious way. So, I have seen that in school, we have studied mathematics, science. If the content is uh, uh, written, it may not be written in a systematic way, but if it is a content written, then others say in uh, other subjects, there is no need to use proper language or linguistic skill. If the student knows the content, then it is all right. There is no need to write it in a proper way or, or use appropriate vocabulary in that particular subject. Yes or no? Yes, madam. So linguistic instruction and improvement in language is only emphasized and highlighted in a language classroom. But that should not be the case. Listening has been viewed as a passive skill which is difficult to assess and evaluate. This is the one of the most important cause. Uh, listening and reading has been viewed uh, as a passive skill, whereas reading and writing has been, uh, sorry, whereas speaking and writing has been um, viewed as a active skill. So there is no assessment to the skill of listening. We cannot assess the listening skill. So th this is one uh, one of the cause that teachers uh, does uh, do not create a scope for listening or active listening in a language class. Teachers believe that listening activities take up a lot of teaching learning time. So most of the teachers uh, think or feel that only to how to cover the syllabus or how to uh, complete our courses is important thing. They are not concerned at all about the linguistic achievement or linguistic development of the child. So they didn't, uh, didn't do not give emphasis on the listening skill, but that should not be the case. The teachers, first of all, must ensure that the listening skill of the child is enhanced so that he will automatically acquire all the three major skills in language. Some believe that this skill will be automatically picked up through exposure to the target language. It can be acquired naturally in response to the spoken word as with language one, that is your mother tongue. But this is not the case. If you will only listen and we are uh, getting exposure only to that foreign language in that particular class or particular uh, period, then it is not possible on the part of the learner to acquire that skill or acquire that language naturally. It, it is not at all possible. We have to be exposed to that particular language in order to be an efficient and effective speaker in that particular language. So listening is an important skill. Listening is the foundation of literacy during infancy and early childhood. Listening vocabulary is the first vocabulary of any child which they acquire through listening to what the caregivers and other people in the social network speak. Exposure to new words through reading comes much later. There would be no language without oral oral component. A large part of communication is oral and oral and often non-verbal. We often communicate with the rest of the world through nonverbal cues. Yes or no? Uh, what are that nonverbal uh, cues? Do you have any idea? Again, please, ma'am. A large part of communication is oral, oral, or uh, often nonverbal. Communication is nonverbal. What do you mean? The nonverbal communication. <laughs> that means it is a sign language. It is a sign language. 
Non-verbal cues means using your body movement, postures, gestures, eye contact, facial expression. Uh, yes, you cannot. You should not use the uh, word, or you cannot speak, but you cannot. You can uh, use your uh, facial expression, gestures, yeah, yeah. posture, body movement, etc. Yeah. Okay. Next is we need skills in listening for the very business of living, study, and work. Even to run business and government educational excursions and interaction with experts, watching videos and listening to professionals make learning activity, learning active, memorable, and retainable. Listening and other language skills. That means how is listening uh, um, linked with reading, writing, and speaking? Listening is an oral experience, whereas reading is a visual experience. Listening provides the foundation for reading. I think this sentence uh, needs no explanation. Listening is an oral experience, whereas reading is a visual experience. Decoding and auditory discrimination is the first step in reading, where beginners, uh, beginner readers try to sound out the words. Uh, what do you mean by decoding? Yes. To make a word by using letters. Receiving a word by using letters, huh? ma'am. Yes, decoding means uh, if something is written, we can uh, find out its meaning from the sentence, the De derivation of meaning from the sentence. Okay, um. particularly, decoding means. Breaking some complex words into parts for the simplified or simplification of the meaning and comprehending the ideas. Whenever there are some complex word or phrases comes, uh, we are unable to convey the meaning or we are unable to comprehend the meaning of that particular word or sentence. We are breaking it down uh, by part uh, into parts and we are decoding the meaning. The process is called decoding. Is it clear? Uh, next is your non linguistic clues like pauses, voice variation, and inflection can at later stage provide clues to the meaning while reading. A child utilizes her listening vocabulary as a basis for reading, and those with a limited listening vocabulary may have limited reading and writing vocabulary. Next is your learning corners. So, what are the strategies through which we can avoid the challenges faced by the learners? So understanding common challenges faced by the learners, identifying difficulties such as distractions, distractors, language barriers, and attention issues. Uh, in order to make our listening effective, we must have to identify the difficulties that comes in the way of, a, way of active listening. So this, this may be a distraction, language barrier, and attention. Strategies to address learner concepts, sorry, concerns. Techniques like active listening exercise, minimizing distractions, and providing additional support. The role of teacher support. Teachers play a crucial role in helping students to overcome listening challenges. So, this uh, who can elaborate this sentence, this concept? How teachers help the learner to listen attentively and to overcome the listening challenges? Yes. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you elaborate? Ma'am, by giving a tax which the students or the child like by himself. 
so the child will uh, more appropriately uh, intensively listening to the teacher's talk if that is uh, according to the level of the child and interest of the child okay very good so to make teaching learning process enjoyable and effective first of all the task should be a focused one and it is objective based there are some specific objectives for which the teacher is teaching that particular content or text so it should be objective based and it should have a particular aim and it the task should be challenging for the learners so that the child will take initiative in order to be spontaneously involved in that particular task the teacher's role is to create a conducive environment while the child will feel the task is challenging for him the task is, task is objective based and the task is focused so that he will con, uh, spontaneously involve in the teaching learning process am i clear so in that particular way the teacher can improve the listening skill of the learner need for modeling good listening behavior why teachers should model good listening teachers set an example for students to follow the impact of teachers listening behavior on students students learn not only from what is taught but also from how it is taught so a teacher can be a model for the students that means while uh, whenever the teacher is uh, saying something or speaking he must use appropriate pause stress intonation pronunciation so that the child will follow the teacher so teacher set example for the students to follow similarly the teacher students will also imitate the teacher they observe not only what is being taught to them but also they also observe how it is taught next is practical ways to model good listening what are the practical ways through which we can model a good listening behavior or listening skill among the students demonstrating active listening maintaining eye contact showing empathy showing interest responding with short comments asking questions to clarify or summarizing what the child said in order to clarify understanding next is your understanding spoken discourse comprehension of heard discourse involves two kinds of process very much like reading one is your top down process start from the reader to the listener next is your bottom up process starts sorry top down processing start, starts from the reader or listener bottom up processing starts from the text so what is this top down processing and bottom up processing do you have any idea regarding the above two con uh, regarding these concepts no ma'am yes okay so let me speak let me clarify Uh, first is your bottom up processing what is that bottom up processing bottom up processing starts from the text that means here the focus more focus is on the grammatical as aspect or the syntactic pattern or the structural aspect in which way the text is written or in which way the text is formed the use of text particularly the use of vocabulary the gra grammatical items the syntactic pattern or the structure of the text is given much em emphasis so it, it, the bottom of processing starts from the very beginning stage of the learner whereas the top down processing starts from the reader or listener in the top down processing we comprehend ideas we analyze them we interpret them we break the ideas into com uh, simpler forms to comprehend for other listener or reader 
so top down process uh, needs um, higher order skills or higher order thinking skills like critical thinking creativity problem solving so these skills come under the top down process can you tell me more yeah you are not able to understand yes ma'am but something tell me more okay. yeah something i will tell you when you do anything maybe anything or this uh, two concept no okay ma'am the so concept will clarify in audio okay gote hela top down processing i may not be very fluent okay in audio because i am not uh, acquainted with the concept in audio uh, but i will try okay one is your bottom up processing means talu upar ko jiba hala so it starts from the text jeta bele ame konosi gote passage paduche gote text paduche ta ame kon karuche ta ko word by word ame sentence by sentence ta ko paduche ta ko bujhiwa pai ba comprehend kariya pai chesta karuche tar structure kemiti se structurally arrange heichi kon grammatical items use heichi kon vocabulary use heichi ta upar ame beshi importance douche धीरे धीरे आम कौन कर मोर कम्प्लेक्स आईडिया सेन्टेन्स पैटर्न बा हाउ द मेन आईडिया द सब आईडिया अफ द कनसेप्ट आम धीरे धीरे से आड़क जाऊे सो यहाँ हूँ बटम टू अफ प्रोसेस तलूर को जीवा फेर इज द टप डाउन आप्रोच जोटा हूँ ऊपर तल को आसवा मीनस गोटे होल कम्प्लेक्स कनसेप्ट को आम कमी आनालीसीस् करे कमी विश्लेषण करूचे ताको विभिन्न पार्ट रे केमती हमें ताको डिवाइड करूचे ताको हमें केमती इंटरप्रेट करूचे हम भाषा रे केमती हमें ताको आवर इन आवर ओन लैंग्वेज हाउ वी आर इंटरप्रेटिंग इट ओके इज इट क्लियर यस मैम यस मैम ओके द मैम टॉप डाउन मींस होल टू पार्ट नो इट इज नॉट नेसेसरीली सब वाला हम होल टू पार्ट को जिबानी इट रिक्वायर्स मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स स्किल टप डाउन आम से आसो जो आम गोटे पर्टिकुला लेवल को पलै आस जो आम फ्लुएंटली आक्यूरेटली पढ़ी पारे बुझीपे गोटे कनसेप्ट को कहीपरचे तेल आम कौन कर टप डाउन आप्रोच आसवा So, what is that method? Bottom up or top down? If we want to solve that, at first we read the paragraph, then we are proceeding for the questions. So that is top down or bottom up? Ah, uh, listen. It is a process. Okay. A paragraph is given, and you have to find out the main idea or central theme of the paragraph. Then it is top down processing. Okay. बोथर कंप्लीमेंटरी बोथर कंप्लीमेंटरी ओके इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द लर्निंग लेवल ऑफ द चाइल्ड पिलर और लर्निंग लेवल बा को स्टेज रे से अछि से अनुसार हम कोन करबा एक्टिविटी डिजाइन करबा बा स्ट्रेटजी यूज करबा एटा बॉटम अप होबो कि टॉप डाउन होबो इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द लर्निंग नीड एंड एबिलिटी ऑफ द चाइल्ड ओके We cannot just uh, simply arrange some top 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 down or bottom up process for the whole class. We have to first identify the learning need and ability of the child. Which type of learner is with me, and what are the their needs? What are their abilities? In which way I have to uh, suppose there are uh, very intellectual uh, students are there in my class. Okay, so the, the they are self learners. I don't need to uh, use the process of decoding. Or bottom of processing for them. Okay. I simply proceed with the top-down approach. Is it clear or not? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. so bottom up processing is also called decoding the decoding process is the process of translating the sounds that the listener receive into standard forms of 
language that means the sound the learner listens uh, it receives and it uh, stores it in in his or her memory and then he interpret it or interpret in the form of word phrases and sentence hence a piece of speech is reshaped into larger units of language bottom up processing involves the use of micro skills whereas top down approach involves the use of macro skills uh, here the bottom up in the bottom up approach scan the input for familiar lexical items segment the stream of speech into constituent parts use phonological cues like sound stress and intonation to identify the information focus in an utterance use grammatical cues to organize the input into constituent parts uh, so decoding process takes place at phoneme level identifying different vowel and consonant sounds syllable level identifying the uh, content meanings what is there in the content or subject okay okay ma'am next is your syllable level recognizing the syllable structure by paying attention to the variation in stress recognizing that weaker syllable are normally found in the structure words structure words re, normally we will find weaker syllable uh, uh, suppose uh, a word father father its pronunciation is but father r is absent so which syllable is uh, given importance two syllable fa and the father fa is given much importance and uh, the is given less importance so the he, here is the weaker syllable is it clear yes ma'am yes ma'am next is your word label identifying word boundaries uh, that means a matching sequence of sound to words matching words that are in their standard forms and figuring out new words next is your syntax label isolating phrases and clauses making predictions using the beginning of phrases and clauses and anticipating the syntactic patterns and checking hypothesis next is your intonation label making use of sentences using appropriate pause stress and intonation intonation means rising and falling tone of the voice next is top down processing starts from the reader or listener it assumes that the learner brings to the text certain knowledge of the world of text and of knowledge the top down process uh, assumes that the learner comes to the class not empty minded the learner does not come to the class in empty minded that means it has something within its mind while it comes to the school so this knowledge is likely to be useful in understanding a text but it often needs to be activated and activities such as discussions questionnaire quizzes brainstorms and vocabulary anticipation can all be used to do, to do this the so top down process requires more complex cognitive abilities or more complex mental abilities that is brainstorming uh, uh, participating in discussion debate questionnaires vocabulary anticipation etc okay so this is all about your listening skill बॉटम ऑफ आप चाहिए ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड आर यू लिसनिंग और मी आर नॉट हम हियर कम्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ लिसनिंग 
we are only here uh, in listening skill and we have to okay in which aspect tumhe completely bujhi parlo nahi na ko point re difficulty achi yes तो मैंने कहा बेहरा अच्छा किए बुझ किए बुझ पार टपडाउन और बटम अफ अप्रोच ये किए बुझ पार मेन का इज नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग बट आई हैव सेड यही भी बुझिलो नहीं मैम बॉटम ऑफ अप्रोच मींस जहां भी हमें व्हाट एवर मे बी सेंटेंस वी गो थ्रू दैट मींस वी हैव टू पार्ट सेपरेट द इंडिविजुअल पार्ट गो थ्रू द मीनिंग एंड व्हाट एवर मे बी द सिंटैक्स पैटर्न एंड टॉप डाउन मींस यस so particularly if you will uh, distinguish between the two skills uh, in bottom up approach there is some micro skills okay you understand in this way in the bottom up approach there are some micro skills for example scan the input for familiar lexical items as uh, seg segment the stream of speech into its constituent parts and using phonological cues and using grammatical cues to organize the input into constituents so this requires uh, use of micro skills whereas the top down approach requires the macro skills using background knowledge to comprehend the message identify an interaction as belonging to a particular event that is storytelling joking praying assigning places person or things to categories in for the topic of the discourse in for the sequence between events so particularly uh, menaka menaka are you there ओके सो बॉटम ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग हला आई कैन सी मैम बट आफ्टर हो जी ओके आर यू ऑलराइट मेनो का ओके 
so listen to me but bottom of processing is decoding so decoding ame ko thi karu ha decoding ame ko thi karu jo ki ame kichhi word ba phrases ko ame bujhi parune bujhi parune se bhi ame kon karu shabd ko jo thi ame kichhi gude jatil shabd ko ba jatil padyansh ko ame bujhi parune ba bakyansh ko ame bujhi parune se thi ame kon karuche बाकी तो को भांगी भांगी के हमें बुझवा पय चेष्टा करू दे बा तारो से सेंटेंस रो मीनिंग कोन होबो से सेंटेंस कोन रिप्रेजेंट करू छ ताको में बुझवा पय चेष्टा करू छ तो दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिकोडिंग एंड इट रिक्वायर्स माइक्रो स्किल्स ए स्किल पय हम को कोन करबा दरकार शब्द गुडी के विषय रो धारणा थिबा दरकार शब्द रो अर्थ को हमें बुझि पारु थिबा दरकार शब्द रो वाक्य रे व्यवहार संपर्क रे हमरो धारणा थिबा दरकार ताहेले जे कि हमें कोन करि परिबा डिकोड करि परिबा शब्दी वाक्य भाव यूज हो वाक्य शब्द रवहार कर यथार्थता कौन तो आम कौन कौचे से बटम अफ आप्रोच तो मैंने आम प्रथम रु आम कौन कर शब्द को बुझुचे तार व्यवहार को बुझुचे तार वाक्य व्यवहार को बुझुचे शब्द टी के भाव वाक्य व्यवहार कर पद्यांश में कौली भाव में व्यवहार कर तो आपको हमें कौन करूँ चाहिए घोटे कॉम्प्लेक्स बाज जटिला बाकियांस को बाज जटिला पद्यांस को हमें सारली क्रोता करेंगे ताको हमें बुझूँ चाहिए तो ये टा हो चुका है ना बॉटम ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग और पर्टिकुलरली बॉटम ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग कोट ही देखा जाए हमारा प्राथमिक और उच्च प्राथमिक और सारा रो पिलांगों प Particularly, it's concentrate with the macro skill. Micro means small and macro means big. Macro skill कौन? अम्मे अमरो previous knowledge बा background knowledge की use करूँ चाहे गुटे पद्यांश रो बा गुटे sentence रो बा गुटे paragraph रो meaning कौन है ही थी बो? Similarly, अम्मे cause and effect relationship establish करूँ चाहे गुटे event भी तरे कौन अच्छी कारण हो? गोटे घटना घटवार कारण कौन तार इफेक्ट बा तार परवर्त समय कौन हो विषय रिलेसनसीप एस्टाब्लीश करूचे दैट इज अल्सो कमिंग अंडर बटम अफ आप्रोच नेक्स्ट इज इनफोरिंग द सिक्वेन्स विटवीन इभेन्ट्स द इंट्स घटना गुड़िक घटूँ तार सिक्वेन्स कौन तार मिनिंग कौन से घटनावल मिनिंग कौन घटनार मिनिंग कौन आम बुझाप चेषा करूचे सो इट रिक्वयर्स मच कम्प्लेक्स स्किल Is it okay, Menaka? Okay. Again. Again. Ma'am. I mean, jo jo approach re mane kora jo pratham jo. प्राइमरी लेवल रो पिला मन को पढेले बळ को प्रथम रे अल्फाबेट ता परे किछि वर्ड्स ता परे किछि फ्रेज ता परे ऊपर को ऊपर को समान को जो पैराग्राफ किबा स्टोरी लेखे पे सिको जो सेटा बड म फे परिबो दैट इज बड म पापर दैट मींस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर ट्राइंग टू मेक द स्टूडेंट फैमिलियर विद द और वर्ड्स और यस मैम स्ट्रेचेस मीनिंग Okay, you clear. Then we will move to the other parts. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So listening across the curriculum. Goals of listening across the curriculum. Okay. To listen sensitively and critically to the ideas of others. Again, we have to be yes. We have to be active listener. 
to listen for comprehension and appreciation at varying levels to listen with an increasing span of concentration or to others to listen and respond to materials read aloud expressing opinion on what has been heard segmenting the stream of speech into meaningful units recognizing word classes extracting gist encoded information from the remaining oral text predicting what the speaker might say next so here the predicting predicting what the speaker might say next is coming under the top down approach suppose we are predicting something suppose we are given a story and the story uh, is uh, not finished uh, we we have finished or we are uh, in the middle of the story so the teacher might ask the student what will happen next or what is the end of the story so here there is a scope for the learner to predict yes sudam do you want to say something uh, so uh, prediction is a complex skill which is coming under the top down approach so another important thing developing fluency and accuracy in speaking skill is much important how we can develop fluency while we are emphasizing listening skills that means acquiring the pattern of listening like paying attention to the key words whenever we are listening something we must uh, pay attention to the key words using non linguistic clues by attending to visual signs and attending to physical movements to arrive at the meaning not having not having to listen word or word for word similarly we have to also emphasize on accuracy ability to decode pieces of connected speech word by word so there are different kinds of listening one is passive or marginal listening what is passive or marginal listening that means uh, whenever we are doing something and we are listening suppose uh, the tv is on and we are listening to the lecture of the teacher so this type of listening is called marginal or passive listening but here the listener is conscious about the uh, listening activity or what whatever the speaker is saying the learner is conscious next is attentive listening in attentive listening the learner have to listen to the speaker attentively the listener has to pay close attention to what is being said and the listener here ask question to the speaker whenever uh, whenever he has some difficulty or whenever he has some hard spot because here the learner or listener is an active listener or attentive listener next is your responsive listening responsive listening is uh, another type of reciprocal listening and it requires response from the listener in order to continue with the communication suppose uh, i am teaching and uh, i am also asking you sometimes that uh, am i audible or not yes or no so why i am asking you yes because i want to know are all of you attentive to my talk or not attentively you are listening me or not so this kind of uh, listening is responsive listening in which the um, listener has to respond to the communicator or the speaker okay next is listening for specific information it is also called scanning
so listening for specific information it is also called scanning uh, sometimes we listen for uh, to infer some specific information uh, the uh, what the speaker is saying so this type of listening or listening is called listening for specific information suppose a teacher has assigned us some activity that after listening this text you have to find out the main idea of the poem or main idea of the passage so in that particular case what happens we listen for specific information or we just note down we attentively listen to the speaker or communicator and we note down the important points uh, in order to infer the main idea of the passage that is called listening for specific information next is your appreciative listening appreciative listening is a pleasurable activity wherein a listener settles down to enjoy a dramatization a story or a poem when a poor uh, learner a listener is listening to something dramatization or a story he enjoys the concept so he appreciate the concept so this type of listening is called listening for appreciation or appreciative listening next is creative listening creative listening i have just already discussed suppose you were uh, given a uh, story and the end part is not there you have to end up a story with some conclusions so this is creative listening listening for the purpose of creation we have to create something new so this is called creative listening next is analytical or critical listening analytical listening makes a great demand on the listener because the listener needs to be careful accurate and attentive in order to make inferences and value judgments regarding situation process places person or things so after listening we have to sorry we have to give some judgment or we have to evaluate and we have to analyze the situation so this is called analytical or critical listening next is listening for gist a listening for gist means in order to understand the gist or main idea of a lecture conversation or report it is also called your skimming in skimming we just read out and we have to find out the main idea of the lecture or understanding the gist listening for gist listening for detail listening for detail suppose we have to understand in detail a lecture or a passage that is most important for us so in that particular case we have to listen in detail so here uh, we can give the example that uh, Uh, a science experiment we are conducting in a laboratory so you must listen carefully uh, what the instructor or what the teacher is saying otherwise our experiment will be a mess so in that particular case we have to listen properly and accurately attentively uh, what procedure we will follow uh, what step we will follow in an experiment what materials we will use so uh, this is called listening for detail is it clear yes ma'am okay so uh, your unit 5 is uh, over we'll move to unit 6 that is developing the speaking abilities what is speaking expressing our thoughts very good expressing our thoughts but it should be in a meaningful way it must have some meaning suppose we are uh, thinking something and we are we are just expressing it and it has no meaning then can you speak it uh, can you say it uh, appropriate speaking no ma'am so speaking with a specific purpose and speaking for a specific purpose which has some meaning 
to the listener okay that is called speaking we are speaking means we are saying something that is usable or useful for the listener if it is not useful for the listener then the listener will not take any interest to listen to our talk yes or no yes ma'am uh yes ma'am in a history class uh, wh what happens in a history class the teacher just comes and uh, reads out the stories or uh, reads out the passage or text or the teacher ask a student to read out the text that is written in a history book and uh, instruct the whole class or uh, rest of the students to just listen can you say it is a proper speaking uh, function or uh, the teacher is using proper speaking mechanism no it is not the proper function of speaking so in order to be active speaker or effective speaker we must must have to use appropriate pause stress intonation and voice modulation in our speech so that the listener will attentively listen to our talk and uh, our teaching learning process will be effective and interesting for the listener so there are two functions of uh, speaking speaking can be distinguished as interactional and transactional interaction interactional function serve to establish and maintain social relations whereas transactional function focus on exchange of information so interactional function aim is just to interact but it has some meaningful interaction similarly transactional function is exchange of information between the speaker and listener here the speaker is the teacher and listener is the students focusing on learners interaction skills usually enhances their fluency or speaking ability speaking activities in subject classroom can focus on dynamic context based and meaningful interaction transactional skills focus on using language to communicate specific information if you want to communicate specific information to the students then you can use the transactional skill for example learners need to comprehend news broadcast lectures debates description and instructions speaking tags centered around such aspect would enable to learners to gradually communicate or express various types of messages next is your speaking to learn and learning to speak speaking to learn is an important teaching goal but learning to speak is an equally important teaching objective it is through speaking that opinions are expressed arguments made explanations offered and information transmitted being able to speak well is a skill set which equips students well for the rest of their lives teachers need to incorporate both speaking to learn and learning to speak activities assignments with subject specific goals by reflecting and discussing on language use for a range of purposes in their lessons in the context of teaching of their disciplines so uh, speaking to learn and learning to speak are both complementary to each other that means uh, it is applicable both on the part of the teacher and on the part of the learner also so features of a spoken discourse some features of spoken discourse can be stated like this it is composed of short phrases and clauses may be planned or unplanned has more generic words as compared to written language it involves reciprocity shows variation so a spoken discourse may be a word may be a short phrase or clause a spoken discourse may be planned or unplanned a planned uh, 
स्पोकन डिस्कोर्स में भी लेक्चर एंड अनप्लान में भी कॉन्वर्सेशन नेक्स्ट इज लेबल्स ऑफ फॉर्मेलिटी इन स्पीच सपोज इन एन वेडिंग भोज प्रेयर्स प्लेजेस रिलीजियस वर्सेस द स्टाइल इज फ्रोजेन दैट मीन्स फ्रोजेन लैंग्वेज दैट नेवर चेंज इट इज फिक्स्ड एंड स्टैटिक बट इन केस ऑफ बिजनेस मीटिंग एंड कोर्ट रूम यू यूज स्टैंडर्डाइज लैंग्वेज एंड फिक्स्ड वोकाबुलरी एंड मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स वोकाबुलरी and that is the style is more formal similarly uh, whenever we are concerned about the doctor patient lawyer client or employer to employee relation the speaking aspect is more consultative or the speaking style is more consultative we seek at assistance from the speaker next is your loose sentence structure slangs vernacular speech it is more casual and it is used for interactional purpose it is basically used among the friends and close relatives next is your pet names terms of endearment private jokes it is more intimate and informal and it is used between the people close to each other parents siblings spouse friends etc next is developing speaking abilities across the curriculum how we can develop speaking abilities across the curriculum students use to communicate effectively spoken written and visual language with a variety of audience and for different purposes students use language structures language conventions to create critique and discuss different tests students gather evaluate and synthesize data from a variety of sources to generate ideas and questions and by posing problems to communicate their work teacher purpose and audience students develop an understanding of and respect for diversity in language across the cultures and geographic regions so these are all goals of speaking across the curriculum speaking activities in the classroom can be organized in a variety of ways that is use a wide range of core speaking skill using wide range of core speaking skill do you know the term core speaking skill no ma'am so in core speaking skill there are four items number one is grammar vocabulary pronunciation and fluency so that ame core speaking skill upare kahuchi ame ei chari ta aspect upare emphasis daba are you properly using the grammatical items in our sentence or not are you using proper vocabulary is your pronunciation appropriate and are you fluently using the language so in the classroom we must focus or emphasis on these four aspect these are the core speaking skills next is activities for developing speaking what activities can you employ in our classroom to develop the speaking ability among the learner number 1 is selecting a text teacher can select different types of text picture books poetry non fiction text magazine newspaper articles etc this criteria for selecting a text should be that the text is rich enough to stimulate a discussion or a conversation so the text must have some meaning and it must create a scope for the learners to debate and discuss among themselves the teacher can also use visual text such as videos real with key visuals tables diagrams figures so that the students will automatically interpret the idea or speak from the visual items next is your discussion discussion is one of the important indicator through which you can 
uh, fruitfully employ the uh, learners into the speaking task. Discussion uh, involves or employs scaffolding. Scaffolding is one of the most important skill. Scaffolding means by speaking more slowly, emphasizing keywords and phrases, using simple vocabulary or grammar, building in redundancy through repeating, restating, paraphrasing the use of synonyms, antonyms, defining through exemplification, body language, and so on. So are you getting my point or not? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So another important thing is explicit discussion on language content, connect, uh, content connections. Explicit discussion on language and content connection. The teachers must decide how far to simplify the language. So here, in order to make the students uh, or enable the students to speak, the teacher must simplify his language so that the students will come up with a gist or idea about the context. So the teacher's language, uh, uh, in the teacher's language, there should not be any ambiguity. It should be clear and clear instructions should be given to the students so that they will speak in an effective way. Next is your gentle inquisition. An interaction between teacher and students, which is, which is built on a series of questions and answers. It is one of the most effective way to elicit response or to uh, so, uh, make space for the learners to speak. So here in this case, the teacher can employ the whole class in the question answer session or the teacher may simply uh, divide them into groups and ask to discuss on a particular topic and come out with a conclusion. This is called the gentle inquisition. Here the uh, pattern is the question answer pattern and the teacher said some question and uh, elicit response in the form of answer from the students. Next is your grand conversation. Grand conversation uh, particularly emphasizes the comprehension of text. Particularly a higher level comprehension of text. And, the, and it improves students' attitude to reading and uh, speaking. It is called grand conversation. So in a grand conversation, the teacher asks fewer questions mostly in response to what students are saying. Students engage in the conversation by taking turn for speaking and gradually students uh, receive the content and direction of the discussion. Decisions regarding who will talk, when and for how long come about naturally. So here in the grand talk, the teacher is only a facilitator and the teacher divides the whole class into group, assign them some tasks, and it requires higher level comprehension. Suppose a teacher uh, uh, has given a task of uh, identifying or finding out the central idea of the topic. Uh, the teacher uh, has given an unseen passage to the students. And the students are asked to read carefully the passage and come out with a gist, the main idea or central idea of the passage. So here it comes the grand conversation. But at last, in the grand conversation, the teacher concludes the conversation by summarizing and drawing conclusions. The teacher will affirm whether the groups or the whether the whole class has come out with the right conclusion or not. If the whole class is not uh, has not given any right answer or come out with a right conclusion, that the, then the teacher will summarize the whole instruction or task. Next is your structure, argument, and debate. Debate is called a structured argument. Okay, I, I want uh, that uh, all of you are aware about the term debate. I want to listen from you that how debate, how through debate the speaking ability of the learners will be improved.
and why debate is called a structured argument yes because ma'am debate is uh, basically based upon a particular topic and it needs the information of one view different kind of opinion of different kind of students so through debate a healthy environment create which will creates a competitiveness among the student and also it will create a uh, self speaker of a student that's why in this way it will develop the speaking skill of the student very good so debate therefore is called a structured argument it is not an unstructured argument the purpose of uh, organizing a debate is particularly uh, allowing the students to express their views or opinions about a particular task or activity or concept okay so here the a speaker or the learner first of all uh, analyzes and evaluate the topic what what the topic is about then after he says he may criticize the topic or he may um, say in favor of the topic so here the speaker also justify his statement justify the statement of uh, in uh, if he is uh, favoring some or, or if he is in favor of some statement then he have to justify that or if he, if he is denying some statement then he have to also justify that so it is a structured argument is it clear yes ma'am so next is your reading skill or reading comprehension what is reading yes understanding the written format understanding the written format okay good आ किए कह सतोषी बाला महांती यस मैम हाव यू जस्ट सेड दैट रीडिंग रीडिंग ऑर्डर तुम्हें कह लगी यस मैम ओके अंडरस्टैंडिंग द रीडिंग फॉर्मेट एंड रीडिंग द decoding the yes, meaning yes, good okay rasmita yes ma'am yes ma'am can you say something mm -hmm. about reading i'm um, reading uh, reading means तो आम कि बुझा बुझ मान रिडिंग रु कि बुझकी मैं लिखापी कि बुझा तो बुझ सारापर आम लिखा reading only so, cognitive domain reading only cognitive domain ha uh, just uh, rakta we just uh, 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 re memorize memorize the uh, text not memorize no, the text is not reading not memorize maybe understanding memorize. Ah, we have to comprehend the text. We have to comprehend the text by reading. Ha uh, ha, comprehend. Ha, uh, comprehend. The... Okay. So, whenever we are talking about reading, we are talking about the ability to construct meaning or comprehend meaning from the text. It may be written. Okay. It is written. so uh, those students who have problems uh, in reading text are likely to experience difficulty in obtaining information and particularly those students have uh, uh, difficulty in achieving the learning outcomes so reading is the most important skill in order to convey or in order to infer some meaning from the text 
similarly in order to be an effective speaker also we must have to read a lot of things yes or no jodi ame bahut gude jinso padhuche januche ba padhi ki januche tahale ame kichhi kahiba pai we are able to say something jodi ame gote teacher hoba pai chahunche ba gote effective teacher hoba pai chahunche then we must have to read at least 2 hours a day amuku 2 ghanta nischay padhiba ko padibo a good speaker is a good reader also okay so reading comprehension in considering the reading process no, no, we no, have no, to no, distinguish no, between no, hello ऐ पंदर को जब मिंटी है वो मेरे में आसन नहीं थी लेते हमें खाली सोनो थी लो बुझ पाना नहीं थी लेते ओके ओके तो रीडिंग ठीक है तो रीडिंग कंप्रेंसम So there are two I types of PDF. Uh, so this PDF is not with you. Again. This is your igno material. Is not with you. Okay, okay. I'll say. Again. Okay. Reading comprehension. Reading comprehension. There are two types of reading. I suppose you have reading for meaning and reading aloud. Particularly, reading aloud is concerned with whenever we want to develop the uh, reading Anandji. ability of the learner. Like, yes, he is using appropriate pronunciation. Yes, very good. Pause, stress, or intonation, or pronunciation, or not. That is the purpose of reading aloud. Or we can say that whenever we are uh, preparing our lesson plan, there is a con term or concept model uh, reading aloud by the teacher. And it is followed by the students. Teacher Jamul Habare, Podhibe, concept ba, text tiku, students likewise follow Karibe, even students Manamodia, Sabul Habare, Podhibe. So the read, uh, reading comprehension of first step hella reading aloud, the text. Next is reading for meaning. Jotokame coach is silent reading. You might have come across the term silent reading. Sunicha? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma loud reading, out of which is silent reading. We read silently. To comprehend the meaning of that particular text or concept. That is called reading for meaning or silent reading. So there are a difference between the traditional and new definition of reading. The goal of reading in traditional aspect was mastery of isolated facts and skills. Amakenti Bibhina Bibhagi Krutahitiva Bibhina fact. Our skill ko kemiti ame kaun kari baam? Taapar master ani ba that that was the concept of traditional views of behaviorism. But the new definition of reading kaun kahuchi? Constructing meaning and self-regulated learning. So the new definition of meaning says that the learner will be a self learner or self reader. He will construct the meaning by reading himself or herself and he will come out with a conclusion or come out with a meaning. The learner 
do not have to depend on the teacher okay reading as a process as traditional views is mechanically decoding words memorizing by rote just by rote memorization and mechanically we just decode the words whenever we face some difficulty uh, in uh, comprehending some text or comprehending some sentence we just decode it and we just memorize a rote we just rotely memorize the concept but the new definition of reading skill is that interaction among the reader the text and the content that means we are saying here that critical reading a critical reader is one who analyze the concept or from which angle the text is written what is the motive of the writer behind his writing this is all about the critical aspect of reading learner role learner role was passive uh, whereas in the new definition of reading or cognitive sciences learner role is active strategic the learner uses strategy how to remember the uh, the various text next is uh, the reader who is a good reader a good reader is one who interact with the text that means a good reader is not a reader who just uh, in for meaning from the text but the reader interacts with the text that means the reader interact with the writer with the uh, poet with the narrator etc actually here the uh, role of the reader is not just to read that is uh, there in the content actually the reader is making conversation with the text by generating relationship between what they read and what they already know that means uh, the reader also here generate new ideas uh by taking into consideration his previous knowledge and the knowledge that is there in the text the reader creates his creates the new knowledge of the reader construct his knowledge so readers have a network of prior understanding about a topic that is called the schemata a reader all of us have a prior understanding of the concept of the topic the reader organizes his or her world knowledge Uh, into categories and a network of connection or schema that function as information retrieval system whatever we learn or whatever we read that is stored in the schema in our mental process whenever we come across the text we just remember or uh, memorize the concept and we just form our own idea so this schema is activated when a related concept or keyword is encountered in a text next is the text next uh, like readers every text every piece of writing is unique in terms of its genre vocabulary language style difficulty level and thematic content so the text is also different the author's intent is also a key feature of a text so the author's intent also varies from text to text and we have to analyze in which way in which manner the author has arranged the text is it sequential or it uh, is it uh, sometimes we find that in a novel there is uh, so in some novel we do not find any sequence the creator or the narrator or the writer uh, creates some ambiguity in the novel in order to confuse the reader to come come with a conclusion so in that particular case the reader has to find out a conclusion or the reader has to analyze the character that is present in the novel in from which angle the writer has written the characters and the characters are playing which type of role the reader just have to analyze it so the text is also different from different perspectives reading as an interactive process we have already discussed it uh, top down and bottom up approach so here the top down approach particularly i have discussed that uh, the use of prediction is based on one's prior knowledge top down approach is concerned with the prediction while while the bottom up processing refers to the role of text in providing input through decoding letter and word recognition i think i do not have to un make it clear further next we will come with characteristics of reading reading is purposeful 
reading is selective reading speed varies according to the objective of our reading from which perspective are you reading are you reading for specific information or are, uh, are we just uh, reading for uh, to find out the gist likewise the speed of the reading also varies reading is silent here depends on which type of reading if you are concerned with the secondary level learners then they are supposed to read silently the concept if you are concerned with the primary level learners then reading is allowed or model reading is appropriate for them reading is text based reading involves complex cognitive skills that means reading also enhances creativity critical thinking problem solving abilities with the learners effective reading involves chunking up information that the well developed schema makes possible that means we uh, divide the information into small parts so that uh, we will memorize it and it will remember in our schemata reading is based on comprehension Uh, so features that make text complex there are two types of features one is quantitative and another is qualitative the quantitative features uses unfamiliar words number of syllables and length of sentences uh, if lexical content is largely unfamiliar to the learner the text will be difficult to understand and too much mental energy will be expended in trying to figure out the meaning of the unknown words this is the quantitative features so depending on the lexile score we can determine what text is suitable for a level or class so your uh, language or uh, your uh, particular discipline is also coded or specified according to the level of a particular class what linguistic skill or what type of words syllables sentences will be present and uh, what type of lexical content the text will contain it all depends on the level or class of the learner next is your qualitative features refers to the level of meaning and purpose of the text particularly qualitative features um, uh, uh, we use uh, graphs pictures maps uh, visual supports um, and we provide audience and a visual script from which the author addresses the uh, knowledge sorry qualitative features are particularly concerned with the description of problem solving cause and effect relationship comparing and contrasting uh, using graphs pictures and maps uh, finally the readership or the audience for whom the text is written and how the author addresses the knowledge demands with their expectation of readers knowledge qualitative features is uh, mostly concerned with the level of meaning and purpose of the text teaching students to read across the curriculum comparison of traits of active and passive readers so these are the characteristics through which we can uh, differentiate between an active reader and a passive reader an active reader self monitors adjusts and reflects about the things he reads whereas a passive reader simply receives information without understanding it uh, for an active reader or a active reader builds up background knowledge before beginning to read that means a active reader must prepare himself or herself before going to read knows the purpose of reading knows why he is reading whereas a passive reader start reading without thinking about the subject does not know why he is reading that particular concept a active reader a active reader as 
what the text will be about whereas the passive reader is not curious about the text a active reader previews the pictures title heading bold face quotes etc whereas a passive reader does not preview text materials a active reader makes predictions but a passive reader does not make predictions a active reader breaks text into manageable chunks whereas a passive reader is overwhelmed by the amount of text to be read that means exam achi exam agaru kichhi bhi padhai ni aur last re mote bahi diya gala padhiya pai ba mu bahi dari bas padili tapar kon hobo mu taku dekhi bhi je mote etiki padhibar achi dekhi ki kon hobo mu bitare dar pasibo aur padhi paribi nahi yes or no so i am yes, not prepared this is the case seya tum mo pai bhi seya hue hue na nahi yes ma'am Next is your during reading and during during reading. What the active reader say uh, does and the, what the passive reader does gives complete attention to the reading task. A passive reader is easily distracted, keeps the purpose in mind, but a passive reader does not know why he or she is reading. A active uh, reader self monitors comprehension, whereas a passive reader does not monitor comprehension. A active reader stops to use a fix-up strategy when comprehension is low. That means a active reader analyzes the concept. If he is not comprehending some item or comprehending some text, then he reread the concept in order to comprehend that particular item. whereas the passive reader does not reread the material he just only read for the sake of reading a active reader rereads for understanding but a passive reader does not or cannot make connection and does not have any opinion about what he has read a active reader asks what author is trying to say but a passive reader does not care for what author is saying a active reader continues predicting and a passive reader does not make prediction a active reader generates question and six answers but a passive reader does not ask questions similarly there are some text features uh, from which we can uh, generate the purpose for example a good title or the name of the from the name of the title we can just inform what is the, the topic or what is the content is about similarly table of contents table of contents tell us where to find the specific information next is your scanning and skimming scanning uh, enables a person to look up specific information from a text for any source and skimming allows the person to quickly read through something to get the basic idea madam how to read ke kon to scanning and skimming scanning enables the person to look up for specific information from a text from any source if you are reading for specific information or if you are searching something that is very important for us that is scanning but uh, if you are uh, reading uh, very quickly example, to inform the example example madam take example de ki di da bit difference ki example de ki kahiye okay okay तो स्कैनिंग है तो किसी स्पेसिफिक इनफॉरमेशन विषय में जानवा को चाहूँगी से मन कर गोटे टेक्स्ट आम दि जाए आमको कहला तुम्हें आटेटिवली टेक्स्ट को पढ़ से टेक्स्ट भितर को जिनसा इम्पोर्टां मेन आईडिया कौन ताको तुम्हें कौन कर ताको तुम्हें इनफर कर तुम गोटे टेक्स दिहला गोटे कंटेन्ट दिहला 
तुमको किसी इम्पोर्टेन्ट क्लूज भी दिया हला ए जिनसे ऊपर तुमको पढ़ीवार अच्छी एवं दिस आर द इम्पोर्टेन्ट थिंग्स ओके सो यू विल जस्ट रीड द होल टेक्स्ट एंड यू विल जस्ट फाइंड आउट द मेन आइडिया व्हाट इज देयर इन द टेक्स्ट व्हाट इज द टेक्स्ट अबाउट और व्हाट इज द पैराग्राफ अबाउट but while skimming allows the person to quickly read the paragraph or quickly read the text to get the basic idea we are just uh, reading for pleasure skimming means reading for pleasure suppose you are uh, reading a story book or we are reading a novel so um, if the Uh, someone asked us about the story or about the novel we can just have a basic idea that uh, what is the story about so we are just reading for pleasure that is skimming ma'am but scanning is reading for specific yes ma'am pleasure means extensive reading will padebo Oh, extensive reading, yes. Pleasure. Extensive skimming is one kind of extensive reading. Ma'am, but uh, scanning is uh, scanning is uh, scanning is intensive reading. Ma'am, okay. suppose I am going to the time table, go to class, the time table. I am going to 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 the time table. But it is very particular, you know. Yes, very detail. Scanning means in detail, in bit by bit. We are uh, you are reading. We are not skipping any say word or sentence. Okay. Ma'am, uh, scanning scan means is, reading uh, the whole text attentively and carefully. But in skimming, we can. Uh... Yes. Ma'am, skim skimming means John and John are going to skip the table. हाँ स्कीमिंग रे आम जल्दी जल्दी पढ़ की बेसिक आइडिया विषय जान पार बेले बेले न्यूज पेपर आम तो पढ़ू आम कौन बिट बै बिट पढ़ू कि नो वी आर जस्ट रीडिंग द हेडलैंस एंड वी आर जस्ट रीडिंग क्विकली टू गेट द बेसिक आइडिया यस नो दैट इज स्कीमिंग वी मे मिस मैंने आम किसी जिन छाड़ भी दे पार इट इज नट दैट वी आर रिडिंग अल द होल थिंग ओके दैट इज स्कीमिंग बुझी है मैम यस मैम जो स्कीमिंग और स्कैनिंग सिर्फ पढ़ के हां मैम जो दिस स्कैनिंग को हिसाब धरा जाओ हमरो गोटे पोस्टिंग की जॉब लेटर टेस्ट सी जोड़े क्या मैं पूरा डिटेल्स रे पढ़ु छु हाँ। किछि भी स्किप करनो से रहई परबो नो नो मैम दैट इज इंटेंसिव दैट इज नॉट दैट इज इट इज नॉट स्पेसिफिक इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज इंटेंसिव ओके ओके we are reading a news letter for specific information okay na ma'am thora ja amku hi letter ti aschi to amu pai hi seta details ramku to seta padiba pai padibo ha but we are not reading for specific information it is already known to us it is already known that they what this letter is about yes or no Yes, ma'am. If you are going to, uh, if you are uh, going to join in some organization or in a company, and you have uh, a list of documents to be, uh, you have to take uh-huh, it to that company. Okay, some kind of Again. documents. Any uh, that this type of document is uh, should be with you while you, you will join that particular one. That is any. You will just specific information. You will list it out and you will write it down. That is scanning. Okay, reading. Okay. Okay. That is scanning. 
ଆଜ୍ଞା ଓକେ ଆମ ରହିଲା ନାଉରି ଆମେ କଣ ରାଇଟିଂ ସ୍କିଲ ପଢିବା ଆଉ ଆସେସମେଣ୍ଟ ଅଛି next is your prediction prediction is your, your hypothesis testing or you can just say guess what will happen next that is we predict about the future uh, so this uh, prediction is divided into three stages pre reading while reading after reading that means think aloud by the cover of the book we can predict what the content is about similarly in file reading we are in the middle of the content we can also predict what will be next similarly after reading the content we can also predict that uh, we can also uh, here we can also verify whatever you, prediction we have made in the pre reading and while reading stage is it correct or incorrect after reading stage we can justify or we can analyze So I, I have just discussed critical reading skill. Critical reading kind of active analytic reading of this text. Rereading to identify patterns. Critical reading is already uh, always done by whom? We have uh, just already discussed two types of readers. Active reader. Active reader uh, does critical reading, and the passive reader does non-critical reading. So this is your teaching vocabulary detailed discussion. अच्छी तुम्हारा B S one forty four block three. इटा तो पढ़ाई नहीं थी वो तुम्हारा? नहीं वाला मैं पढ़ाई नहीं. सही थी details तो तुम्हारे को पढ़ा हुआ सीटा. Yes. तो हमें अभी discussion करेंगे writing across the curriculum. what is writing yes graphical representation of word graphical representation of word systematic way and meaningful math okay this our thoughts in a written form Yes, very good. So, whenever we are expressing our thoughts, ideas, views in a written format, or whatever uh, we have read, we we are just uh, writing it down. in a meaningful way we can call it writing skill the skill of writing the skill of writing improves the communication skill critical thinking and creativity ability of the learner but writing is the most complex skill and it comes after the pre linguistic skill how writing is different from speech yes okay can you have another class and we will discuss writing and uh, assessing assessment in a more uh, detailed way uh, again ma'am yes ma'am because i think uh, jo, we are yes. just uh, mp discussion kale kichhi labh hobo ni ame out class re discussion karibe ki yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am 
राइटिंग ऑफ अरेंजमेंट को ओके यस मैम लेट्स स्टार्ट द अगेन अच्छा तुम्हारे पेडागोजी ऑफ इंग्लिश अछि हेलो हां मैम अछि अगेन हां मैम अछि यस मैम इंग्लिश पेडागोजी रे मो देखा क्लास मो सही क्लास रे तुम्हारो ए जो राइटिंग और असेसमेंट को मो मैनेज कर देबी ओके अगेन मैम मैडम चारटा क्लास यस मैम यस चारटा क्लास चारटा क्लास अछि इंग्लिश पेडागोजी रो चारटा क्लास अछि तादरो दुटा क्लास मोर अछि हैला अगेन तो से दुटा क्लास रे आई विल मैनेज इंग्लिश पेडागोजी रे मु तमको से दुटा को मैनेज करबी ओके ओके अगेन यू लीव नो सी अगेन मैम यस मैम थैंक यू मैम यस मैम थैंक यू मैम Thank you. 